Okay. Accelerate's on, brakes off. Follow traffic, TVM860, Charlie Alpha, taxi from the ramp to runway 5 Pullman. Home traffic, TBM860, Charlie Alpha is uh, entering runway 5, and we're going to be back taxiing on 5 and taking off 5. Left turn out, uh, left downwind departure to the west, Pullman. Home traffic, TBM860, Charlie Alpha, taking runway 5, and it will be a uh, a left downwind departure to the uh, west Pullman. Okay, so lights, ice and air, flaps, trim, gas, and we're clear for takeoff. There we go, the prop governor is coming back. Hey, okay, takeoff power set, airspeed is alive both sides. Hey, okay, rotate, tap brakes, gears up, yaw dampeners on. It's out. We have our separator on today. Pullman traffic, TBM860, Charlie Alpha, left cross run, runway 5, Pullman. Pullman traffic, TBM860, Charlie Alpha is uh, three miles to the north of the field, uh, 4,000. We're going to be departing the area to the uh, northwest, Pullman. Okay, so let's just go direct your freight up. Have Seattle Center, good morning, TVM 860, Charlie Alpha, five miles north of Pullman, climbing IFR, and uh, we are IFR to Boeing. TVM 860, Charlie Alpha, Seattle Center, you from the Pullman Airport to the Boeing Field Airport as filed. I maintain level 220, squawk 4766. Okay, TVM uh, 860, Charlie Alpha, cleared from Pullman to Boeing as filed, maintain 220, 4766. Okay, so we're zero, still... Charlie Alpha, read back, correct. And our zero Charlie Alpha radar contact, uh, four miles northwest of the Pullman Airport. Zero Charlie Alpha. Still no accumulation on the wings. But we're good for icing. You're going to have to watch it in the descent. And we're keeping our speed up a little bit on the off chance. Flight 1977, QM860 so Charlie Alpha, moderate precipitation 10 to 2 o'clock, beginning in uh, 8 miles. And it extends about the next 75 miles longer route. Zero Charlie Alpha. So let's go back to weather. Radar. And let's wait for that here. We're already getting big headwinds here. It's gonna be a slower flight to Seattle because I don't think we're getting out of the clouds today. Which means we have to leave the separator on. But where do you push the talk? Over here. That'd be good to know if I have a heart attack and you have to land the plane. I'm not even a low time pilot, so what do I do? To survive. Any way you can. Instrument conditions like this. TBM 0 Charlie Alpha change to my frequency, 126.1. 26.1, TBM 0 Charlie Alpha. TBM 0 Charlie Alpha, 26.1. Thanks, sir. Center TBM 860 Charlie Alpha, inner reports of uh, turbulence or icing on our route into Boeing today. And TBM 860 Charlie Alpha, negative ice and smooth ride. Thanks, sir, Charlie Alpha. Seattle Center, good morning, TBM 860 Charlie Alpha, 220. TVM 860, Charlie Alpha, Seattle Center. Good morning, areas of moderate to heavy precipitation. Present position extends intermittently to Boeing Field. Expect light to moderate shot and uh, maybe some light rime icing on the defense. Sir, Charlie Alpha, 580. Today we're going to be correct. talking about the annual, which I kind of think of as an annual colonoscopy for this plane that costs more than a brand new Hyundai. 
And if I contrast what happens with the Skylane with this, uh, the difference is huge. On the Skylane, I typically do it in the winter time because I'm not really flying the plane then. They kind of want the business, their maintenance shop is going, so we just have it go in. Sometimes I don't even hear another thing about it. You know, there's nothing really wrong with the plane. They just charge me my 2,500 bucks or whatever. I don't miss the plane. It's not any more than I think it's going to be. And it's just over before I even know it. There are seven things that I think people need to know about annuals in this plane or planes like it that they might not realize before they buy them. So my hope is that by knowing a little bit more I going in, people can manage the process better, know what to expect, and uh, that overall ownership would be a better experience because there's a lot of things I didn't understand as well. The first thing that, that um, you need to know about annuals in this plane is you're going to miss your airplane. It's going to be gone for longer than you think. It's not going to be gone at a time that is convenient for you because unlike the piston world, these planes fly year round. There are no excuses. Airplanes, we have, um, you know, anti-ice and uh, great engines we can typically get up, up above the weather. And um, if we're talking about the shops that do these, we have even thought, oh, well, we're going to be not flying during uh, Christmas. Why don't we have the annual done at Christmas time? Well, the shops don't want to be working at Christmas either, and they don't care. So I've never felt any sense of urgency from the places where we've done our annuals for getting Seattle the planes American done quickly. 16, 16, and I've never felt from them that it's like, oh, here's a good time to do it that you might not want to use your airplane. So conversely, having a super capable airplane makes it um, more likely that you won't find a time when the annual is convenient for you. This last annual took three and a half weeks which I consider to be way too long. And then at the end of the three and a half weeks, we had a bunch of wildfires roll through it, so it got all smoky and we couldn't fly anyway. So I ended up being without the plane for four and a half weeks. The second thing you need to know is that it's not just the time that you're missing the plane, but it's also a huge hassle. And let me explain a couple of ways that it is. You have to find a way to go and drop your plane off and pick it up, and there's no good way to do it. They don't have like an Uber taxi that will drive you or a some pilot hanging around that's gonna go and drop you off at the annual place once you've dropped your plane off, and then you have to go back and pick it up. And this got a little bit better for us when we started doing ours yeah, in Sandpoint, which is a Daher owned facility that's about a two and a half hour drive from where we are. That's not so bad. It's still kind of a pain. And so you will have to spend on time, time on that. The other thing to know is that if you're flying with a pro pilot on your staff, the time when the plane is in the annual, they're gonna be on paid time off, essentially. Because there's no plane to fly. And so that's just gonna be like a three or four or five week window when nothing happens. And um, so that's another penalty for the annual some people don't think about. Number three, I guarantee you're gonna be confused. So what this means for me is that a little while after I dropped the plane off, I got a PDF document on my email from the maintenance facility and they had a list and it was like five or six pages long full of all these different things that were like, hey, we could check this out or we found this or, you know, what about this? What about that? Some things are easy, like the tires. I know the tires are worn and they need to be changed. So I was planning on doing the annual anyway. That, that's simple. But there's lots of other stuff, which is just uh, bizarre and obscure and doesn't make any sense. They'll make a recommendation on it, but you just have to go after page after page of these things that they'll send, and sometimes it doesn't make any sense. So you're, you're going to be confused. The fourth thing that you need to know about the annuals is that stuff is going to magically break during the annual. When I delivered the plane, it was in perfect working condition, no squawks. We had flown it all year long without a single thing uh, going wrong on the plane. But a couple of times during annuals, we've had yeah, magical problems with the airplane. Level three, six, zero, dark. One of them was on uh, rudder trim. So they said, well, we tested the rudder trim and it failed, so we're going to have to replace it with this thing that cost $10,000 or $15,000 or something. And that, it never given us any trouble. And they're like, well, yeah, we tested it. The rudder trim uh, failed, so we're going to have to replace it. The more I think about it, there was one time when we flew the airplane the rudder trip. TBM zero, Charlie Alpha, descent pilots, discretion, maintain one six thousand, the Boeing sail altimeter two nine or seven four. Two nine or seven four uh, PD to one six thousand, TBM zero, Charlie Alpha. So 
Um, there was one time we went to take a flight. We turned it on once and the rudder trim didn't work. And it was a, it was a big problem in flight because we had taken off without without it working. And we had to keep our feet on the rudder all the way home because the electric rudder trim wasn't working. And then when we got home, we cycled it. Totally fine, no problems. So like this intermittent issue that shows up like once every 50 or 100 times, they just tested it and they're like, oh, it's broken, we're gonna have to fix it. They didn't even bother cycling it because they get more maintenance money. It's no skin off their nose if we have to pay for the parts. The other thing that happened at our most recent annual was they took the oxygen bottle out because they had to do some kind of static test on it every five years. I don't know what this is. It was gonna cost us a fair chunk of change. And um, they were like, yeah, we got your oxygen bottle out and stuff was rattling around inside. There were just these two parts that were part of the regulator in the oxygen tank and they had fallen out. Just because they somebody had bothered to screw them in at some point, maybe the manufacturer, I don't even know. They were like, well, yeah, and we, we it's gonna take an extra two weeks because we, we have to get the whole thing uh, worked on now and we could get you a new oxygen bottle that costs $7,000 and you could be up and going again. I mean, it was just ridiculous. Center TVM 0 Charlie Alpha, big hitting 220 for 160. TVM 0 Charlie Alpha, thanks to Center Maintain 1 1000. Maintain 1 1000, TVM 0 Charlie Alpha. On this thing about stuff magically breaking, keep in mind, when they go through and they test everything and they poke everything and pull everything out, they might break stuff just because they touch it. There is no Hippocratic oath in airplane mechanic, for airplane mechanics. Their, their first rule is not do no harm. They're going to be testing and poking and prodding on things. And some things are going to break just because they did that. The fifth thing you need to know is you're not done. Even after going in for the annual, the TBM still needs to go in for its 200 hour. If you happen to be flying this plane for more than 200 hours a year, you're gonna have it go in again and it's gonna be sitting there for, again, a couple of weeks and you're gonna be down. The sixth thing you need to know is that, um, and this is kind of like, uh, this is connected to what I said about the plane being, um, you know, stuff might break just because people touch it. Your plane is probably gonna be, or could be less safe just because it goes to annual. And a couple of reasons why, is number one, uh, because they touch something, it might break. If you go look at, at a risk assessor of, hey, I'm going on a flight, what is the risk associated with this flight? Um, they have those for iPad and other things, it's like just help, help, helping pilots be safe. One of the things that makes flying unsafe is this is the first flight after maintenance. It does increase your risk factor. And the other thing is, and this is related to your plane being gone and you're missing, is it you're going to get rusty. So if, if you don't fly for five weeks as a pilot, and then all of a sudden you hop in and do a super complex flight, that's going to be unsafe. The 361 would do like the record. I mean, and after all of these things, the seventh thing you need to know is, yeah, uh, it is great sure, to get your plane back. Because you've been thinking about flying, you've been wanting to go places, you don't have a plane. It is great. It's a great feeling to get your flight back. It's just that you also need to understand that that might not mean that everything is in perfect working order. And you're probably more likely to find squawks after you get your plane back than, than when you delivered it. And that's been our experience. So just keeping these seven things in mind as you go into an annual in some cases can help it to be a better experience. You know what to expect. Money-wise, our last annual, getting some precip on the wings here. We're going to watch. Annual itself cost 10000 The stuff that absolutely had to happen at the annual, including, hey, surprise, those air masks. There's an oxygen mask that you were relying on that your life depended on. Uh, we somehow decided that they're not good enough, so you're going to need new, new ones. That's an extra 2000 And if you want the, mas the masks that don't make you sound like Darth Vader when you're on the intercom, that's an extra 2000 And so I decided not to spend the money and just got the regular old mask for the bargain price of $2,000. The first time I used the mask, I tested the mask after they put the new masks in, it broke. So um, you're, there's going to be stuff like that. When you add up all of those things, and including the oxygen bottle, I think our annual was somewhere in the region of 30 k uh, was the final cost. And Keep in mind, I was disappointed about that, but I've heard of people buying TBMs that are older. So it's for sure it, it is, you know, it, it, it is. The fact is that these were older planes, like maybe a 2005 or something like that. I've heard of annuals going up into, you know, $100,000, like a six-figure annual. It, how, I mean, how old is this plane? Uh, this is a 2011. I mean, I didn't like 
the fact that our annual costs that much and other people's annuals have been like three or four times as much. So th that's about what, what it costs in terms of uh, in terms of dollars you're going to be uh, paying the maintenance facility. TBM 0 Charlie Alpha, to send a maintain 1 0 thousand. Maintain 1 0 thousand, TBM 0 Charlie Alpha. TBM 0 Charlie Alpha, how's the red in the descent then? Uh, light chop 0 Charlie Alpha. TBM 0 Charlie Alpha, okay, thanks. Heading schedule approach 1 2 3 2 9 er 23 9 er TBM 0 Charlie Alpha. Approach TBM 860 Charlie Alpha, descending 1 0 thousand with Yankee. TBM 860 Charlie Alpha, Seattle approach, expect ILS 1 4 right approach, Boeing field, flight present heading, descend to maintain 8000. Uh, maintain 8,000, present hitting, zero Charlie Alpha. Uh, the boots, they puff out. See, look, look what they're doing. Oh, does that make it so it doesn't stick? Alaska. Sail approach, TBM zero Charlie Alpha at uh, light rhyme icing from 1, 3,000 down to 1, 1,000. TBM zero Charlie Alpha, Roger. TBM uh, zero Charlie Alpha, descend to maintain 7,000. Maintain 7,000, TBM zero Charlie Alpha. Uh, final approach course is 135. Uh, glide slope at Toge, it says uh, 1,600 feet. And we can, this is an altitude of 308. Miss approach, climb me on the localizer southeast course cross uh, the waypoint, which is o OCZ at uh, or above 1,500. Then climb 6,400 on the localizer southeast course outbound on Seattle VOR 104 to Blaco intersection. Uh, on a uh, distance 11.8 from uh, Seattle VOR and hold, continue climbing, hold 6,400. Oh so, yeah, and they said if you're going missed, like if you're going practice, you may still have to descend below 1,500. That's for crossing traffic. Going into Seattle. This is the published approach, so I need I need to know what this looks like because it's it's depicted here and all the numbers are here. I don't know if we can get. Oh, you can get one one of them right there. I mean, I don't know that it'll make a difference, but, but you can see that Boeing is under the clouds right now, uh, even though we can see the ground. So this is very interesting after being in the clouds the whole time. TBM zero, Charlie Alpha, descend to maintain 3,000. Maintain 3,000, TBM zero, Charlie Alpha. TBM zero, Charlie Alpha, flighting 240. 240, TBM zero, Charlie Alpha. Okay, hey, she's giving us a turn in, that's nice. Yeah, it says the the ceiling is at 900, so um, Empire expect to break out. Right, it's not, I mean, it's certainly not down to minimums, but it's going to be a little low, so on some of the clouds. Zero Charlie uh, Alpha, flighting 220. 220, zero Charlie Alpha. We're under the Bravo shelf now, so we have to be 200 knots or less. That's going to put us back in the clouds, separators on. This will be fun, doing an, an approach down to 1,000 is, uh, it'll be fun. TBM zero, Charlie Alpha, descend to maintain 2,200. Maintain 2,200, TBM zero, Charlie Alpha. Okay, we're going down. Oh, that's where the bumps are. Your throw up bags in here? <laughs> no, they're, they're <laughs> Just making sure. No, I'm not, I'm fine. TBM zero, Charlie Alpha, flighting 250 for sequencing. 250, TBM zero, Charlie Alpha. Oh, that's not great. Three, three, zero, for your I didn't anticipate the winds were going to be as bad as they were. And then once we couldn't, I mean, it's kind of a technicality, but once we couldn't fly with the separator, it took some speed off too. Alaska 176 flighting at 110. I'm going to have a fast uh, flight home, that's for sure. TBM zero Charlie Alpha, continue present heading vector through the localizer for sequencing. Present heading zero Charlie Alpha. going to fly right through the localizer again. Just like our last trip to Seattle. <laughs> TBM zero, Charlie Alpha, turn left at unit one uh, one zero. Left one one zero, TBM zero, Charlie Alpha. TBM zero, Charlie Alpha, one miles from Toge, flighting one one zero, main two thousand two hundred, established on the localizer, clear to ILS, one one four right approach. TBM zero, Charlie Alpha, maintain two thousand two hundred till established, clear to ILS, one four right approach. Back goes two fifty two, maintain five minutes, one so we seven zero. So what is the wind now? I feel the mission Yankee special observation one four five nine or Zulu wind one three zero seven visible. That's not bad. It's really kind of blustery up here. Foundation zero golf golf two five miles from Toby reaching two thousand two hundred clear. I left only one four at approach. We're on the localizer. Glide slopes available. Approach is armed. TBM zero Charlie Alpha contact Boeing Tower one two zero point six. Over to Tower twenty six TBM zero Charlie Alpha. Boeing Tower TBM eight six zero Charlie Alpha ILS one four right. TBM 860 Charlie Alpha, Boeing Tower, wind 140, 14, runway 14 right, clear to land. 14 right, clear to land, TBM 860 Charlie Alpha. Yeah, so the wind's up to 14 now, so. Yeah, I'm gonna um, just 
land with uh, takeoff with approach flaps today because it might be gusty on the ground. It's not what they're saying, but it's possible. A little bit more speed than we usually do. So we are, we did capture the glide slope. We're on our way down now. Expect to break out at about a thousand feet. Hey, landing checklist. Inertial separators aren't gears down three green. Initial to where we want it. The flaps are at approach and we're cleared to land. Still don't see the runway, but we're not even down to a thousand feet yet, so. Five hundred. Hey, okay, here we go. Usually way more nose down at this point. Flaps in. Going to our citation 100 Golf Golf approaching S Boogie on the Alice uh, 104 right. Citation 0 Golf Golf, Citation 1 0 Golf Golf, Golf Boeing Tower, wind 140. Minimum. Minimum. Caravan on final. 20 minutes ago. Not a caravan. Citation 900, runway 104 right. Critter line. Critter line 104 right. Can I get an update on the altimeter? Two nine seven two. zero golf golf request and update by support. We'll let you know, golf golf. Speed. Oh, wasn't that nice? Nice job. I'm not, I'm not, fin I'm, I'm not fishing. I wasn't fishing, but uh. Jim Zero Charlie Alpha, see parking. Modern Zero Charlie Alpha. Jim Zero Charlie Alpha, turn left at Alpha Niner, contact ground for Niner, do you recall the base? Uh, left Alpha Niner over to ground, TBM Zero Charlie Alpha.